Ted, look, it's great to have you with us. I want to get straight to this uh, question of whether you apologized or not, right? So you were on Ben Ferguson's radio show, and at first uh, you explicitly said, I'll quote you, I do apologize, not necessarily to the president. People got upset on Twitter, said that wasn't a real apology. Ben asked you again. He said, uh, specifically, are you apologizing to the president of the United States? You said yes. A lot of people still say you didn't apologize. Did you mean it? Aaron, can you see me? I see you, Ted. All right, I can't see you, so I'm at a great disadvantage because I glow and I know you do too. Aaron, come on, you've got this English language down really well. I bet you understand when the question is, do you apologize? And I answer yes. You don't really have to ask that question again, do you? Well, I just wanted to know because a lot of people felt that, you know, the first opportunity, you know, when you said, well, not necessarily to the president, then you know a lot of people picked up on that. So I wanted to give you the opportunity, of, you know, to say that you really did mean it. Um, but, but I want to ask you, because this is the, the, the question a lot of people have. Um, you know, I read your Twitter feed uh, today, and you told me uh, on Twitter, at Aaron Burdett, you said, hey, you better have the view tape ready. And I thought, what is the view tape? And I found it, Ted, and here's what it is for our viewers. This is when the President Obama used the word mongrel in the summer of 2010. I wanted to play what he said about mongrel and what you said. Here goes. I have obviously failed to galvanize and prod, if not shame, enough Americans to be ever vigilant not to let a Chicago communist-raised, communist-educated, communist-nurtured, subhuman mongrel like the acorn community organizer gangster Barack Hussein Obama to weasel his way into the top office of authority in the United States of America. And the interesting thing about the African-American experience in this country is that we are sort of a mongrel people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all kind of mixed up. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> now, that's actually true for uh, white America as well, yeah. but we just yeah. know more about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and, and so uh, I'm less interested in, in how we label ourselves. I'm more interested in how we treat each other. And if we're treating each other right, then I can be African-American, I can be multiracial, I can be, you name it. Uh, what matters is, am I showing people respect? Am I caring for, one, uh, for, for other people? That's, I think, the message we want to say. So what do you think, Ted? Well, number one, thank you, Aaron, for playing that tape as I requested, and I appreciate you monitoring my Twitter account. I think you know what I think. I think the president is intentionally disassembling the greatest quality of life in the history of the world. I believe that he is creating class warfare intentionally to get Americans to draw this line in the sand where I've never seen such political discourse in all my life. And yes, I do apologize for being part of that political discourse because greater men than myself have advised me that that kind of street language in a volatile interview as you played earlier is not appropriate when we're trying to get some upgrade here in America. But I cannot put into adequate terms the condemnation I feel and so many Americans feel that this president's fundamental transformation of this country is indeed the destruction of the American dream of being compensated based on being the best that you can be. The concept of social justice and economic equality is truly bizarro. The president's a bad man. I want to make sure that Americans are encouraged to be the best that they can be, not to be compensated for mm -hmm. not even trying. I really believe history will show that I've been right and the president and CNN was wrong. So I want to I want to understand because a lot of people want to understand. And look, I understand you're saying now I want to elevate the discussion. I think a lot of people are going to say that's great if you started to do that. But but I want to understand why you used the word mongrel when you did. OK, because obviously, you know, we looked around. I looked it up in the dictionary. I'm sure you have at this point as well. The definition is a dog of mixed or indeterminate breed. And the only use of the word mongrel that I could find in common talk, because you're, you're talking about street talk, was actually the Aryan Nation uh, membership form, where you have to affirm, I'll quote, I'm an employed white and Christian. I concur that Aryan Nations is only Aryans of Anglo-Saxon, Germanic, Nordic, Basque, Lombard, Celtic, and Slavic origin. I agree with Aryan Nation's biblical exclusion of Jews, Negroes, Mexicans, Orientals, and mongrels. That's the only use I could find of that word. Did you mean it that way? 
Boy, you learn something new every day. No, I've never heard that reference before. I'll tell you, I've been a cop in uh, Lake County, Michigan since 1982 or thereabouts. I conduct federal raids with the DEA and ATF and the U.S. Marshals and the FBI and Texas Rangers and the heroes of law enforcement. And we're rearresting fugitive felons who are let out of their cages after murdering and raping and molesting children, carjacking. We keep going after these guys. The adrenaline is something like you'll never experience. I hope you never have to experience it. But when we're done with these kinds of raids, we get together and our hearts are broken that we have to face these monsters. And we call them mongrels. We call bad people who are destroying our neighborhoods mongrels. I knew of no race, racial reference. I think the president is absolutely correct. Whites, blacks, Hispanics, yellow, red, we're all mongrels basically because we're mixed breeds. I concur with that. So I learned something there and I learned something from your research into history. But for anyone to claim that I'm a racist or it had racist overtones is the typical crap that the prop propaganda ministry in the media, particularly most of your cohorts there, even though I got Pierce Morgan's ass thrown out, and I'll do the same with Don Lemon and Wolf Blitzer when right, I can. Don't, if you but do you me might a favor, be able to stay on because I appreciate that. I respect that. them both greatly. But, but let me... Well, let me, I, I, just, I just did. They don't deserve respect, but you go all right, ahead. All right, but let, let, me, let me ask you about something else you said about the president, though, since you're saying there was nothing racial about it. I'm hoping you can explain uh, a certain word here in that same uh, conversation that I played for you where you use subhuman mongrel, you also said this. A lot of people would call that inflammatory speech. Well, I would call it inflammatory speech when it's your job to protect Americans, and then you ask you to look into the television camera and say, what difference does it make that I failed in my job to provide security and we have four dead Americans? What difference does that make? Not to a chimpanzee or to uh, Hillary Clinton. I guess it doesn't matter. Chimpanzee? Yeah, Aaron, I appreciate you playing that. Do you really think that I reference any race it is a primate? I call my buddies and my band chimpanzees when they miss a good guitar lick. Come on, give me a break on that. I reference no racial overtones there whatsoever. I was referencing people who would look in the camera with there's four dead Americans in Benghazi and, and, and refuse to be accountable and say, what difference does it make? You've either got to be a punk, a liar, grossly dishonest, dangerously anti-American, or some kind of animal to agree with that kind of stuff. So insert the word dog or mongrel or chimpanzee. I have nothing against any race. In fact, my whole life is dedicated to my black heroes, my black musical heroes, and you know that. I have no, not a racist bone in my body. That's the, the Saul Alinsky propaganda ministry running amok like your goofball friend, Paul Begala, who well, claims I, that my, I've been, I has been. I just celebrated my 50th greatest tour. Ted, I know 50 one thing. years, number I know one, one guitar thing. player in Detroit last year. I'm a black guitar player from Detroit. Get over it. All I know is that if I called the president, who is a black president, a chimpanzee, I would and should be fired because I it is a racist thing to I say. I didn't call the well, president. Well, then who are you referring Never to? Never called the president a not chimpanzee. Not to a chimpanzee Never, or to Hillary Clinton. Never, not trying to. You think, you Who's think the chimpanzee? I, you think I hesitate. People who support that it doesn't matter for Americans are dead. People who looked into the television camera and said what, the, I mean, the, the people you're referring to. Well, I will leave it to our viewer to decide whether that was a direct a reference to the president or not. And Ted, I, I wanted to ask you something that obviously is personal to me as well, and that is that, that this isn't just about the president in terms of uh, the things that you say and how you say them and the tone that you have for, for your base people. Um, y y women in particular, here are some of the things, words you've used to describe Hillary Clinton. I obviously can't say them on this program, but they include the toxic C word, worthless bitch and two-bit whore. These are all things you've used to describe her. And, and, and my issue is, whether, whether you agree with her politics or not, there are people who listen to you and care deeply about what you say. How can they not be offended by terms like that? Well, Aaron, I, I have a, a very important advisory board. And as a new mother yourself, is your son your first child? He is my first child. Well, I congratulate you on that. I've got nine wonderful kids and 11 grandkids, and they're constantly telling me over the years, Dad, honey, quit calling people names. So I'm stopping calling people names. You know, I'm on stage. You ever see a good Richard Pryor? You're not even allowed to mention Richard Pryor's greatest albums on your CNN. We're not allowed to use the titles of Richard Pryor's album because of so political correctness. 
So I have unlimited that that irreverence not, and outrage on stage. Are you going to say that you're never going to call people names again? Live on Aaron Burnett out front, CNN. Ted Nugent, remember the Alamo, February 24th, 2014. I'm not going to call people names anymore. However, I have a little escape clause here because when I'm on stage singing Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang, would you give me permission to go overboard on occasion? Please tell me you will. I think that to me, I mean, I know you're, you're trying to make slightly light of this, but to me, these things are, are not light at all because in a country that you know, these about, are very, so no, I'm not making light. To, to, to very make, to serious, cause very serious. And create more polarization is, is a horrible thing to do. You're right. My, my children, my brothers, my sister, and my wonderful wife, Shemaine, have told me that over and over. And I think at the tender age of 65, I think you're absolutely correct. Instead of using terms like subhuman mongrel, I'm going to get right to the meat of the matter, where our president is a liar. He lies about you can keep your doctor, period, over and over again. He lies what? about Benghazi. He's lying about the IRS. So I won't call names anymore. I'm going to get right down to the nitty gritty and identify the criminal behavior by the people abusing power in the United States government. So I, I take your advice to heart, Aaron. And when, when you talk about things like these things with women, I mean, is this something that I mean, do you these things with women? What's these things? These with things women? when you use the words like toxic C word, because I think the problem that I have with it and a lot of people have with it is that you wouldn't say those things unless you thought those things. They aren't things that people just say no, off not the cuff or say because they aren't thinking. People don't say those things unless they think those things about people. And, and that is a fact, Ted. No, I don't think it is a fact. I take a lot of my cues from Bill Maher, you know, your left wing poster boy who used the same word to describe the great Sarah Palin. So I, I, I think learning well, from that right kind of offensiveness, you know, no, you're right. It wasn't right. And, and Aaron, I haven't I think that was about seven years ago. I said that on stage and it was during some of the most egregious violations and abuse of power and corruption that people like Hillary Clinton are responsible for what she did in Benghazi. She should be in jail right now, along with Eric gun running hold right, and a well, whole I bunch don't... of the crooks in our government. So I won't call them names, but I will try to better identify. But it's not a Ted Nugent thing. There's a huge but I mean, Ted, swath is this of because America. You're afraid? And you're I mean, correct. That... We need to have are we you afraid, though, that people like discourse. Rick Perry, people like Rand Paul, who tweeted out when you made yes. the comment about yes. subhuman mongrel and demanded an apology, yes. as he should have, those yes. people came Absolutely. to you and say, look, we're not going to campaign with you anymore. We're not going to do things with you anymore if you don't stop no, this. They didn't Is that say what that. it took? They, they didn't say that at all. They, I don't, I, you will not find that quote, so be very careful, Aaron Burnett, that you don't make things up like your cohorts. Well, I know that uh, you no, said that you that didn't all. want to upset but, these uh, men better than you, and you were referring uh, to people like Rick Perry and Greg Abbott. But they so never I gave me believe... directions like that. They never gave me directions. I, what I did is, whether it's my wonderful wife, my brother Jeff and John or Kathy, my great kids, or someone like you, Aaron, and people around me, they think I'll be more effective if I back off that Detroit street fighter rock and roll stage rhetoric. And I'm here to tell you I'm going to do that because I do respect people like Governor Perry and the great Greg Abbott and Rand Paul and Ted Cruz. And because I do represent a lot of the same people that they do, believe it or not, I think I owe it to those great Americans to be more civil when I represent them. So I, I'm here on CNN, on CNN, mind you, and I, I, I will be doing that more lately coming up. All right. So when you tweeted today to Rand Paul, because um, Rand Paul had demanded you apologize, um, said that your derogatory description of President Obama is offensive and has no place in politics. He should apologize. Uh, once you saw the uh, president use the word mongrel on, the, mongrel on The View, you tweeted back at Rand Paul. Hey, at Rand Paul, let me know when you're ready to admit your blunder. You're backing off that tweet. No, that's, I don't think that's uh, uncivil by any stretch. I'm telling Rand Paul he should be very careful not to take snapshots of an occurrence or an incident or an individual. He should pay attention to the big picture. I consider Rand Paul a great American, and I feel terrible that I pissed him off like that. Um, but I got to tell you, when you speak the truth and represent very heartbroken America, you know, Aaron, let me, let me summarize it like this. I hate that I have 
to be talking about this stuff. I want to respect my government and my president. I want to respect the office, but they have to deserve that respect. And there well, is a culture war going on. I wish we didn't have to do this, but I think we do have to do this. And those. I want to thank you and CNN for allowing me on the program but, to make my statement. I will say that, and you have made it, but I will say, you know, this president was fairly and democratically elected. He is the president of the United States, and like him or not, you, you must respect the office as an American who wants peace and security. That is that is my personal view, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican in office. Ted, thank you very much. I appreciate seeing you again.